welcome students in this session let us see about the microorganism yeast yeast is a unicellular fungus there are about 1500 species of single cell fungi most of the yeast belong to the phylum ascomycota only a few being basidomycota yeast are found worldwide in soil on plant and they are abundantly found in sugary mediums such as the nectar present in the flower and also in the fruits yeast grows in sugary substrates and therefore it is commonly called as the sugar fungus many of them are saprophytes living on dead organic matter a few species of the uh, uh, fungi yeast are parasitic in nature causing disease or infections a few of them live as symbionts in insects which means both of them have mutual benefit yeast is used in the baking industry to a great extent particularly the yeast saccharomyces cerevisiae hence yeast is commonly called as baker's yeast this is the classic image of the yeast cell yeast is an eukaryota we have a well defined nucleus and also the cell organelles in this image this is the physical appearance of yeast which is commercially available and largely used for the purpose of fermentation let us now look into the general features of yeast some of the yeast are mild to dangerous pathogens of humans and animals particularly the candida albicans histoplasma and bastomyces they cause certain diseases to humans and the animals as fungi yeast are eukaryotic organisms and they are typically about 0.075 mm they are larger in size when compared to the other microorganisms and they have many forms they may be spherical egg shaped or even filamentous sometimes yeast is haploid or diploid they may have single set of chromosomes or they have, may have the paired chromosomes the cells may be oval spherical or ellipsoidal in nature yeast is made up of cell wall plasma membrane cytoplasm and nucleus almost all the cell organelles are present in the yeast a plasma membrane is present below the cell wall the protoplasm is differentiated into outer cytoplasm and central nucleus this is the microscopic structure of the yeast cells the nucleus of the yeast contains a large vacuole which is traversed with chromatin threads on one side of the nucleus there is a nucleolus above the vacuole there is centrosome the nucleus is connected to centrosome by means of the chromosomes the cytoplasm contains cell organelles or cell inclusions like mitochondria ribosomes and endoplasmic reticulum we find here the nucleus of the yeast wherein we have the nucleus nucleolus the centrosome the nuclear vacuole and also the chromatin threads as found under the electron microscope this is the classic diagram of the yeast cell all the cell organelles are present in the yeast vacuole mitochondria nucleus nuclear membrane there is a cell wall cytoplasmic membrane 
and a capsule also. In this image, we also find the budding of the yeast, which is a asexual method of reproduction. Yeast do not contain chlorophyll and they are heterotrophic in the mode of nutrition, wherein they have to receive nutri nutrients from other substrates, from their host. It is a saprophytic fungus growing in sugary medium. They live on dead organic matter. They live in the absence of oxygen and therefore are anaerobic in nature. They do not require oxygen for their respiration and they are anaerobes. Reproduction in the yeast is brought about by three methods. Vegetative reproduction is produced by binary fission and budding. Asexual reproduction occurs through endospore formation and sexual reproduction occurs through conjugation. Let us now see the economic importance of yeast. Economic importance is the commercial viability of the microorganism. Yeast is employed in the preparation of alcoholic beverages and drinks. So it is largely used in the brewing industry to bring about fermentation. Wine is prepared by the fermentation of grape juice. Cedar is prepared from the apple juice. Beer is prepared from barley. And country liquor like toddy is prepared from the sugary juice extracted from coconut or palm trees along with yeast. Yeast is used to bring about fermentation in all the alcoholic beverages. This is the brewing where yeast is employed to convert the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. Let us now see about the brewing of beer. Beer is, is prepared from barley along with hops. Hops are nothing but flowers that are used in the beer preparation in order to produce flavor to the beer and also it acts as a stabilizing agent. It gives a, a citrus-like citrus flavor to the beer and water and yeast are added in the preparation. It is mal malting is the first step in beer production. After the barley is malted, it is heated or dried, it is cracked and then it is mashed. Boiled along with hops and now fermentation takes place when yeast is added. So the yeast converts the sugar to alcohol and carbon dioxide. The next and the most significant use of yeast is its employment in the baking industry. Bread, bun, pizza base etc. are prepared using the incorporation of yeast. All these products require, the form, require a dough that is prepared out of wheat or the refined wheat flour. To the wheat or the refined wheat flour, yeast is added along with water and they are prepared in the form of a dough. When the dough is left aside to ferment for about half an hour, we see that carbon dioxide is liberated due to fermentation and this is used to raise the dough of the bread with the help of the baker's yeast. Yeast is therefore used as a leavening agent. It gives the softness to the bread. The porous structure of the bread is due to the fermentation process that has been brought about by the yeast. The, carb the carbohydrates that are present are converted to carbon dioxide and alcohol. So when the carbon dioxide is liberated, we get the porous structure in the bread. Yeast is also a rich source of the B vitamins like thiamine and riboflavin. We can see here the rising of the dough. 
it increases in size because of the evolution of carbon dioxide. This again is the leavening process. The increase in size is brought about by the production of carbon dioxide due to the action of yeast. We can find here the porous structure of the bread. The porous structure of the bread imparts softness to this product. Yeast also produces infections. Some species of yeast cause diseases in man. Many species bring about food spoilage. Some species of yeast cause diseases like leaf curl in plants. Yeast such as Candida albicans are opportunistic pathogens and can, and can cause infections in humans. In this segment, we saw the structure of the yeast cell, the features of yeast and also the economic importance of yeast which are employed in the baking industry and the brewing industry. Thank you.